2021 was an exciting year for SpaceX and its revolutionary Starship Mega Rocket. But 2022 until now? Honestly, not so much. Remember on May 5, 2021, SpaceX proved its concept, launching Starship SN15 and landing it as well? Well, sadly, it's been crickets at Starbase ever since. Starship is yet to set sail in 18 months. But that may be about to change as Elon Musk just clarified about Starship's first payload to orbit. Welcome back to Alpha Tech. Don't forget hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and let's dive right into today's episode. It's not hard to explain why companies have contracted the Starship launch, though it hasn't reached orbit even once. Starship has huge potential that no rocket has yet. In 2016, at an International Astronautical Congress in Mexico, Musk sketched out plans for a rocket to colonize Mars, one he would soon be calling BFR, Big Falcon Rocket, in family-friendly terms, but you get the joke. The concept evolved into Starship, but the focus remained on affordability and reusability, making launches as dull and routine as FedEx cargo flights and Amazon deliveries. The body of the rocket is stainless steel, heavier than the aluminum alloys of most rockets, but cheaper and more easily manufactured. The 33 Raptor engines crammed into the back end of Super Heavy burn methane rather than the traditional kerosene-based rocket fuels, not only because it's cheaper, but because it could be harvested on Mars by combining carbon dioxide and water. The booster is designed to return to the launch pad after its six-minute ride. The company believes it can be refueled and ready to relaunch in an hour. Starship is also reusable. The goal is to be able to launch each vehicle three times a day. Once in orbit, a loaded Starship could be gassed up by a tanker version of the vehicle, enabling it to take its 100 tons of payload onto the moon or to Mars. At the February event, Musk explained how a single Starship launching three times per week would loft more than 15,000 tons to orbit in a year, about as much as all the cargo that's been lifted in the entire history of space flights. Specifically, Musk has claimed the price of each launch might eventually be as low as a million dollars or ten dollars per kilogram to low Earth orbit. The only rocket close to Starship in those capabilities is NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, set to fly for the first time this month. Earlier this year, the agency's auditor found each launch would cost about $4 billion, or $60,000 per kilogram. All of this is incredible, but scientists also fully believe in Starship because it's based on proven principle. Even NASA picked SpaceX's Starship to land Artemis astronauts on the moon, and that's a big guarantee. In a tweet recently sent, Musk called Starship to orbit one of the two main goals of the year. The other is the wide release of full self-driving for Tesla vehicles, a long-awaited feature for the fleet of electric cars that do not yet have approval from regulators. Currently, the company's gearing up for the first orbital test mission of a Starship vehicle, which could lift off from SpaceX's South Texas facility in the next few weeks. Hopefully, Elon Musk will achieve this goal. Now, you must have been curious about what is Starship's first payload to orbit. On August 18th, Japanese satellite operator Sky Perfect JSAT announced that it selected SpaceX's Starship rocket to launch its Superbird 9 satellite to a geostationary transfer orbit, or GTO, as early as 2024. It isn't the first time that SpaceX or another company has floated the possibility of using Starship to launch paying customer satellites. But Sky Perfect JSAT appears to have become the first customer to sign a firm contract to do so. In March 2022, an executive of mobile-friendly internet constellation startup AST Space Mobile told Space News that it had secured two launch contracts from SpaceX for its first operational Bluebird satellites, but had only firmly selected Falcon 9 for one. A second satellite, the executive noted, could potentially launch on Falcon 9 or Starship. In an August 18th article, Space News clarified that Starship is an official option for AST Space Mobile's second Bluebird launch contract, which it must complete before the end of 2024, per the agreement. In May 2019, SpaceX President and COO Gwen Shotwell suggested that Starship could be used to launch Turkey's second domestically built communications satellite, although her offhand mention has yet to translate into any official agreement. 
In 2021, SpaceX bid Starship to launch NASA's tiny Tropics Weather Satellite Constellation, accounting to just under 56 kilos or about 124 pounds, for a price somewhere between $9 and $20 million. SpaceX already has plans to use Starship to launch much larger Starlink Gen 2 satellites, and it has a contract with NASA that should culminate in at least two Starship moon landings that would require dozens of launches to Earth orbit. According to an official payload user's guide released in 2020, SpaceX anticipates that Starship would be able to launch up to 21 tons, around 46,000 pounds, to geostationary transfer orbit, or GTO, without refueling. The rocket's design has changed considerably since then, boosting maximum performance to low Earth orbit, or LEO, from about 100 tons, 220,000 pounds, to 150 tons, around 330,000 pounds so Starship's theoretical performance to GTO may have also improved. SkyPerfect JSAT did not reveal the expected mass of its new satellite, but other planned satellites using the Airbus OneSat bus Superbird 9 would be built around are expected to weigh about 3 tons or 6,600 pounds. In addition to these plans, the U.S. Air Force awarded SpaceX a contract in January worth over $102 million to transport military supplies and humanitarian aid around the world using a rocket. It's a five-year agreement that's part of the Air Force Research Laboratory, or AFRL, new rocket cargo program, according to a Space News report about the contract. This is being described as point-to-point -point transport, taking a payload from one place to another on Earth and it's the largest rocket cargo contract of its kind ever awarded. The new contract doesn't specify which of SpaceX's launch vehicles would be used for this transport, but under the agreement, the AFRL will be able to view and access data for all of SpaceX's orbital launches and booster landings so the right vehicle for the job can be chosen and assessed. But apparently this contract coincides with the point-to-point -point mission of Starship. Aside from transporting cargo and supplies for the U.S. military, the contract also extends to disaster relief and humanitarian aid deliveries. However, there aren't spaceports everywhere that disaster strikes, so landing a rocket filled with necessary supplies is a challenge that will have to be overcome. To deal with this obstacle, Spanger shared that AFRL is exploring a wider range of novel trajectories to mitigate overflight issues exploring a broad range of landing options for austere sites, researching human factors when landing near populations, and integrating a broader range of cargo, including medical supplies. The U.S. military will unquestionably overtake all others once Starship does this. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support is the motivation for us to create even more quality content. Thanks. We'll see you next time.